Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I want to do a bloom using some colors I did a swipe with. Um, it's a ways back. I don't remember the video number. I'll try to remember to link it below in case you missed it. Um, but it, I think it's called a glass wing swipe. Anyway, I used some of the glass wings colors and I loved that swipe to date. It's probably one of my favorite negative space swipes. There's some bubbles in this paint. Sorry, I had to slam my turner down a little bit. Um, it's not a good idea to torch house paint, um, if you don't know that, using the bloom recipe. It creates a skin. So sometimes when you stir up paint, and I just stirred that one very gently just to make sure it was mixed up, um, you get some bubbles and for some reason some of the paint that I have in these small jars lately has had bubbles when it didn't before so hopefully it's not going to be a major disaster but sometimes what I do is just gently set it down um, on the turner and it will help those bubbles pop there's still some in there I can see them so hopefully it's not going to be a problem but we'll get started but anyway I in those, in that video, I used um, some blues, uh, Melly Ringneck Blue Boom Gel. I used Indigo. I used Aquarius. No, not Aquarius. Tropic Blue from Color Art. I used Glass Wings, Baronia Burgundy, Aurora, and Cypress. But with a negative space swipe, it's different because you can layer them or put them side by side and swipe and you don't really have to worry about the order of color. When you do a bloom, you do. So I'm going to give it a shot though and see if we can't layer them differently and get a beautiful bloom using those colors. I did not have any cypress mixed up so I skipped that. So we're going to start with Matisse Indigo as our first Puddle. This is a beautiful blue. Um, Mana Crab Blue Boom Gel is a similar blue color. It may not be quite as indigo-ish, but I try to give you kind of a point of reference when you look at boom gels. It's kind of a similar color. Like I have it right here. It's pretty close. This has a little bit more of like a midnight blue hue to it, but Sometimes when I want to use a similar color and I just want to use a boom gel, I'll use that. So that's a pretty good size petal. This is an eight inch cradled wood round from Loli Bethy. Next color we're going to use is called Tropic Blue. This is from Color Art. This is a glitz color from the primary element, so it's semi-opaque. I tend to try to layer light dark or dark light where I can. But since I was using colors that had previously been in a swipe, you don't necessarily have to think about that. So I had to kind of strategically think, okay, how am I going to layer these? Sorry about my sniffles. It's raining outside right now, I think, here in Texas, which is kind of nice. I don't think I have enough for it to really show through to the top layer, but it's a pretty good sized puddle. I see some goop in my paint. And next we're going to do a layer of Mally Ringneck Blue Boom Gel. Don't forget about your discount codes in the description box below. 20% off of anything on the Color Art website using Mandy1120, all lowercase. And for Pixel Paint Designs, where I get my Australian Floetrol and Boom Gel, you can use Mandy 15, which I think is all uppercase, to save 15% off anything on the website there. You don't really need a lot of Boom Gel for it to be effective. Now we're going to use Aurora, which is from the Glass Wings set. It's sort of a black pearl interference type color. It has it's a black pearl base, or I say black pearl and you think black, right? But it's like a smoky pearl. Um, smoky pearl interference base, and then it's 
like a red peach interference color. It's really cool. A very cool color. And I'm going to do a little bit of it out here too. Just for some, some giggles. Now I'm going to do Baronia Burgundy Boom Gel. I'm cleaning some goop off my bottle at the same time. If you wonder what's taking me so long. I want to avoid any of that caking and causing gloppies in the paint. Beautiful color. And the last color is going to be glass wings. Now normally I put a an acrylic paint underneath the cell activator. So I'm kind of breaking my rule of thumb today. Hopefully I won't regret that. I guess I could put a dollop of the Burgundy Boom Gel or Mally Ringneck. I could do that. I can put a little Mally Ringneck. The reason why I'm struggling with that idea is um, I'm using a blue-black cell activator and both of my Boom Gel colors are dark. But because they're transparent, well, at least the Mally Ringneck is, I think. But it should be okay. So I, I think I will stick to my own advice and put a little bit of Mally Ringneck blue underneath the cell activator. I just mixed up my cell activator, so hopefully it's good. Um, putting boom gel right underneath your cell activator makes your cell activator very reactive, which is great. And in a video, I don't know if I'll get it recorded today, but I want to show you guys I have been playing around with using boom gels um, under old cell activators that probably wouldn't perform very well on their own to see if using it directly underneath helps it perform better and so far it has so this is a blue black atelier interactive cell activator i get my matisse and atelier and amsterdam and all those paints i get from blick and i have a link below as well for blick i don't have any discount codes but sometimes they do on their website Okay, let me do just a little bit more of this. Not too much more. Because my fear is that the, the, the middle will be too dark. I just got my hair in the paint. So I'm just blowing out the center a little bit. Before I hit it with my hair dryer just to give it a little wider opening. coverage. My cell activator moved when I wanted it to. How magical is that when that actually happens? Now let's see what forms. So far the middle's pretty dark, but I don't know how well you can see that. If I, if I zoom you in too much, this thing is going to autofocus like crazy, but this is still developing. So before I take a turkey baster to it, I want to see what happens. But putting a boom gel directly under the cell activator is a good move if you can find one to match what you want to accomplish. I'm just popping a couple bubbles while we're letting that gather. I hope my head is not right in the way. So for me, I'm still kind of remedial at blowing blooms out with my hair dryer. Um, I'm finally getting some progress there. 
But for me, it helps me if I kind of open up the center and then blow it. Otherwise, I find that I get really good coverage in one side and then almost none anywhere else. So far, this is the colors I had in mind, which makes me very happy. So, I still have way too much cell activator in the center. So I'm just breaking the surface tension. What I just did there was I went too far down. So. I'm using a turkey baster. I'm not blowing cells open. I'm just breaking the tension of the paint so they come through on their own. And let me just see what continues to pop up. They're continuing to pop up. So this part is probably a little boring for y'all. But it's a good time for me to pop bubbles because I have some. I'm using Walmart Color Place Satin today. Um, I don't usually get as many bubbles with it as I do the Glidden. I love Glidden. So what I do is if I have bubbles I need to pop, I just stick a toothpick in and I go straight down and back out. And usually my hand just gyrated there. Usually it just basically kind of tucks it back in. Um, if not, I take the toothpick and I gently just roll it in that one area. And I don't obsess over them. I pop the ones that are really annoying and obvious, but I'm not going to pop all of them. You just kind of want to pop the ones that are going to pop and create this white measles pinhole if you can. So while that's collecting, I'm going to do that. I'm kind of excited. This is almost exactly the colors I wanted. Other than having a little too much cell activator in the center, this is beautiful. I try not to blow where there are cells because it makes them warp. But I am glad I put the Mally ring neck at the top because I don't know if you can see it, but we have these really cool peacock cells in the center with green and <clears throat> the baronia burgundy and the glass wings. Really beautiful. Some of them even have the indigo color in them. I'll bring you back up. I think we're probably ready to spin a little. Let's gently spin. That's not that gentle. Honestly, here's the Aurora. Where you see the hints of almost like the purple. That's where that Aurora is kind of overlapping the blue. The indigo. It's creating like a violet color. That looks really cool. Okay, we have good coverage almost on the sides. I love this. How exciting when it actually works like you have in your head. One part bothers me just a wee bit is this right here. And it's not really a bubble. It's just like a piece of pillow paint that doesn't really seem to belong there. So I'm just kind of gently stabbing it to get it to blend a little better. And if you hear weird noises, I'm standing on a stool and leaning over the puppy pool. So you might hear it making noise when I lean over it. What do y'all think? There's some really beautiful ones over here. Let's see if we have enough paint off. I think we do. Maybe just another baby spin. Still a lot of cell activator in the middle. Um, so I kind of just want to open it up for the benefit of giving that somewhere to go. The good thing about Atelier versus like an Amsterdam cell activator is 
It doesn't continue to flow like a river because it's a heavy body paint. So it's, even though there might be a lot in the center and it might dry kind of matted, um, when I say matted, like I mean like a matte paint, like it'll dry less shiny than right now, but that doesn't matter because we're gonna resin this, so it's fine. I love this and I love where this stretches out over the pillow and creates the, the kind of white peeking through. I'm so excited. I love it when it works out. Okay, I think we have enough off. My hands are dirty, so let me bring you down for a close-up. And unfortunately, I don't have any way to get this off of the back of this without dropping it right now. So I'm just pretend you don't see some of this in the background. Yay, I'm so excited. Okay, give me just a second. Everybody, so here is our close-up. Here's kind of from above. It's really, really beautiful. Look at that sparkle. And look at all these cells. We call them peacock cells because they have multiple colors and it looks like the little tail of a peacock where all those colors are represented. But look at that. Look how cute those are. And I love this right here. I love how we get like a plum purple violet color where the Aurora and the Baronia Burgundy kind of went over that indigo. I'm very, very pleased. I love it when that works out like that, especially after I've had kind of some rough blooms lately. Oh, I'm so excited. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to join our Fluid Art group, Fluid Art Friends. The link is below. And don't forget about your discount codes. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. And have a great day. And if you're not a subscriber, I would love for you to join us. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye.